you know, our team's real family oriented and how we're so close. It's like you're taking an eighth grade field trip, you know. <laughs> they're all going and they're yelling and they're, and they're arguing and, and bench racing about whenever because all of us are racers. And it's just so much fun. It's, it's different. It's, most of the teams are spread out, you know. They're two or three, they have their cliques and who hangs out and who doesn't. All of our guys are together. You know, we're, we all share the same rental cars. Everybody goes to eat together. So it's always a kid fest, you know. There have been privateers for as long as there's been the outdoor motocross season. Guys in their conversion vans hoping to race next to their idols. There have been teams, some long since gone, while others have prospered. Butler Brothers Motocross is a team that has stuck around. They've built a new business model for motocross teams to work from and have prospered in doing so. But beyond the shining new 18-wheeler, the fresh gear, and new decals for every race, is something intangible and elusive. Why has this team become so much more like a family while other teams are getting more and more fragmented under the corporate machines that run them. It only took a weekend at Southwick to find out. Oh my God! Yeah. Willie! You're in, dude. That's for you. I think if I eat one of those, I get no, sick. I don't even know what to go for. I can't do that. Who's gonna try the different tires? Just you? Yeah. Who yeah. else? What? Doug. You and Doug? Doug I'm trying an next practice. You're gonna try a second practice? Okay. No problem. We should have time between practice sessions to switch them back. Yeah. Can. Yeah, we should we have we do have plenty of time. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know which one's gonna end up running which tires. Yeah. Just the problem is is when, when one turns around and likes something else and then likes right. certain things about it. I, I can't fault the other guys for not wanting to then try it. Yeah. And that's where we run into the whole predicament. Yeah. It's just like trying to manage, you know, five different guys and you know they see somebody's doing good on a one setup and then Then they all want it. <laughs> I mean do you ever have to say guys no, It's just on. like you know, it's just like school and like that kid had the cooler backpack or lunchbox in you. Yeah, you, 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 that's it. You had to have it. Even if mom said no, you had to find a way to get it. You needed it. You needed it. Something happened right here in, in, a, in one of the crashes this year. This was the first concussion. These ripples. This is the second concussion. These ripples right here. You think if he keeps getting concussions, it'll just turn into waves? It's just sinking now. Just sinking in? Slowly. Hey! Hey! All right, buddy. Been drinking this morning. Forge and I go out. We go to like two different locations, and you know, start everything like yesterday. Just radioing in spots, lines, track chains, and stuff like that. Is it looking to be a little more difficult now? You got five guys out there all at once. Or? It should be okay. I mean, we've had four for the last two weekends, so it, I mean, it shouldn't be any different. Um, you know, we just and then same time we're on the spot for anything that goes wrong. You know, if I need to sprint back to the truck or something, get radioed in, and just run back. So. Time-wise, two or three. I was hoping he would get behind you and you pull him along, but he just kind of lets off. I didn't think so. I know, I know he can go faster. That's good for him usually. Yeah, but he can do better than that. Last week it was like what, 18 seconds off? Oh, it was bad. I don't know what's up. You gotta kick him in the ass. All right, Bubba, you ready this morning? Let's get it done. Let's get us some good gate picks. And Clean these things up and go. Remember, stay light on the balls of your feet, Keith, and stay back a little bit. And don't go to the rough if you don't have to. You want me to wait here for starts or you want to send somebody down? You going to ride a couple laps first? They're all sitting, all sitting like right around 20th. Skinner's in 18th, and the others are right side outside of it. And the second practice is definitely gonna be a slower track, so not not good right now. 
None of them attacked the track when it was smooth and they needed to get the time at the beginning. They started putting their times in later when it was rougher, so it was harder to do. And then all, all my guys are, are a lot better rough track riders, so even though they'll all probably be a lot higher overall in the second practice, those actual times won't be as good as these times, so it doesn't matter for the gate pick. I was telling him, when you guys, I mean, you take like, you come by the mechanics area and you take the roughest main line. Yeah. And like how the mechanics area was on the other side, how Ricky would always come and ride like the wall, like he always does that on this track. He comes by the mechanics area and it's like, it's not even like an out of the way line. He rides right next to the banners and he missed, there's not a, one breaking moment. He goes wide open and just slams the berm and kills it. Like he's so fast, it's ridiculous. He on the left. Biggest, biggest weakness is exactly what you did yesterday. Like, you went out and you laid your fast lap just like you did yesterday early, but you wasted your whole second practice. Like, you don't, mm, picture, picture like a mirror of yesterday, you know, same thing. You had your first lap or two, you need to get going. Jason came by, you pushed one sick lap. When you turned that lap, you were 14th fastest. And you held that for like the first eight minutes of practice. But then, as everybody continued to get faster and faster and just move it up another second or two, that's, you're two seconds off now, you know? If you were running a 202, you'd still be in the top 20. Instead, you're back in 27th. You didn't ride the second half of the practice. You fall down once, you quit, you never did another consistent lap. Like I told you, you that was the practice. The next practice will be getting ready for motos on the rough track. You're not going to get a time. That was your time. You can't waste the time. You can't waste the practice. Yeah. When they're giving me advice on riding and stuff, I know in stuff that I have to listen to and it's stuff that's just like, you know, one-on-one -on -one brothers. Yeah. It is good. You struggled a little bit at the beginning, but uh, ended up finding some better lines and got a pretty decent lap time, so it was good. The last lap, fast lap you tried to put in, not at the very end, but like three laps before that, Johnson was doing a fast lap behind you and he was catching you, so I could watch, and Davey was catching him. So I got like a threefold of it and just coming in when you actually, you come into the turn fast, everything comes in fast, but then you're breaking into the turn and you're almost coming to a stop instead of, like I can see where you break and then I can see where Johnson doesn't break as much and is letting me go ahead and do the dive and trust. And I know the track's a little shaky and the turns aren't the best to trust yet, but you, you gotta do that, that trust, you know what I mean? You know, at first it's so wide open, so high speed, there's, I think I ride it better when there's lines developed, you know? When it's just wide open, pinned, I don't know, I seem to hang on too tight, so. I don't know, this next practice is gonna be rough now, so rough for the rest of the day, so. The team goes out for their second practice with little hope of improving their qualifying times and therefore their gate picks. It's more about finding lanes and preparing for the race ahead now. With the thought that they have done something that no other team has done before, put five riders in the main, they retire to the trailer so the riders can relax and the mechanics can prep the bikes for the day's big show. Actually, me and Forrest have been friends since we were little and it was just, it was something that we both always dreamed about having, you know, me with the race shop and Forrest owner and his own team. It, it was just, it was just a win-win deal. Even now we sit back and have a beer. And, you know, it's, it's amazing where we've been and things we've done and things we have. And not, not a lot of the teams will hang out like we do. Um, all our guys always wait on each other. As far as, you know, if, we're, if it's going to dinner, there'll be 12 of us going to dinner, just not two of us. The big thing I think is all, all the Butler brothers are racers. You know, they own the team, but they're also racers, and they race for their whole lives. So they know, they kind of fit in with the youth of the sport of real good. You know? I mean, Forrest has put together a good program. I think he, he takes care of us mechanics good, and I think we're the only team here with five riders in the, in the moto. Forrest has done a lot, of, a lot of hard work to get all these guys here, and uh, it's showing. But I have no air left because he's stealing it. Stop stealing my air! Uh, this is my fourth year with this team. Yeah. Uh, about six years mechanic. So you've really grown with this team then? Oh yeah. When we first started, we were just in a motor home, me and one other mechanic. So now we're, see where we're at now. Yeah, 14 yeah. guys on the team, full on semi, so. How, how, did, how did you manage to stick around for so long? Uh, Force is a good guy. <laughs> uh, this is my second year. 
Well, I've raced for 14 years, and um, once I got out of racing, I just wanted to work in the industry, and uh, it's just kind of just fell into my lap. So, how's this cooking? Really? <laughs> he sucks. Cause he just he just told me that he was he was the chef. That's why he cooked. You know? It's kind of like his driving. He's number two. He's number he's number two. Yeah, wow, it's always bash, second. It's bash on Tim Day. Yeah, it's always bash on Tim Day. If you're a butler. You gotta be angry if you're under the butler tent. <laughs> when you go down that road, you put the tree at the bottom. Made a mistake, I'm only human. And, uh, no, you're not. That was a good ride. <laughs> All good things must come to an end, and uh, this is what racing's about. You know, it's uh, not fun if you keep going, winning, winning. So now I got some motivation, and uh, hats off to Chad. He's been trying for a long time in the outdoors, and uh, Got it. You are human. Zia <laughs> is like hesitant about that. Yeah. You are human? You are human. <laughs> as far as you like know. You know what I love? Him? The way he talks, he's like, acts like he like barely ever wins. I know, right? Old guy, he's like, I took my parade lap and I noticed I was going to win. You didn't know before. <laughs> You've had a few perfect yeah, seasons. Thousand. You haven't figured it out by right now. This this is this is actually the fastest rider on the team. He just chooses not to ride. I mean he does some like he does like some he has appearances, is that what you'd call it? Yeah. Sometimes he'll grace the track with his presence. Throw a little scrub here and there. I think it's important to have everybody happy and have a good time. People are happy, they're gonna work harder for you. If they're pissed off, then they're just gonna kind of do their job. I treat everybody like they're my family, and I, you know, at home during the week when I'm working, I, I put them before everything all the time. So I think it's uh, the ones that are still here and the ones that are growing with the team see that and recognize that. So it kind of works full circle. You know what I mean? It's not something I try and do on purpose. That's just how I am, and then what I do, and then they recognize it, and then they like to put in the extra work or. Crowd enjoying the hillsides here at Southwick, looking for the best angle. Jason Thomas looking for the best angle for turn number one from our onboard camera. And I tell you what, I think by the end of this first moto, we're not going to have such a good look through that onboard because there's a lot of roost here at Southwick. Go through a lot of tear offs, a lot of roll offs on the goggles. Our helmet cam doesn't have that luxury. Boy, you can see the sandy nightmare that Southwick is. What a great shot from Jason Thomas as everybody scramble for position. And James Stewart is the first one into the clean air. Tim Ferry right behind him, Stewart's teammate. And Carmichael sits in third. And you can see how James Stewart is rocketed out into the lead. Oh, oh and a rider goes down. Oh, Thomas right over the bike, and down goes Thomas. Unbelievable action here. Thomas, you see him, looks like he's going to get back on the bike. That was an ugly one. Hard to tell who all the riders are that are down. How do we finish up? Can, can I say, like, shit on film? You can say it, yeah. Well, then. You can bleep out the, like, shit, and that suck. I just had my wife send me a picture on my phone of my kid to cheer me up real quick before I go back to the truck. That bad? Yeah. How do you take five guys and suck that bad? That was, that was, uh, we had three guys get wiped out in the same crash. In the first lap of moto number one, Sean Skinner, Doug DeHaan, and Jason Thomas all crashed at the same part of the track. DeHaan was unable to continue the race and pulled off the track. Thomas was plagued by overheating problems caused by the crash for the rest of the race and ended up placing 36. Skinner fought back from the crash to have the best finish for the entire team at the 26th spot. Both Brandon Butler and Brian Johnson crashed later in the moto, ending their hopes for a top 20 finish. They ended up 28th and 32nd, respectively. Ricky Carmichael won the moto. See all right? He said he hit his head. He always hits. Thank you.
Is he going to ride? I'm fixing the bike. He said fix the bike. He said he's going Yeah, fix the bike fast. The mood in the pits is somber. Doug DeHaan is still shook up from his crash and trying to recuperate. Everyone is asking themselves what they could have done differently. Everyone except the mechanics. It's their job to get the bikes ready to go for the second moto. This is the craziest moto ever. Hey, uh, if you're when you're done with your bike, I, I mean, what do you think? The frame? I mean, should I just file it down? Cause what? It sticks. Like, yeah, file it. File it. Is it a triple? Thing? Uh, there yeah. wasn't. Much adjustments to make. Every, everything was fine with the bikes. It's just bad luck, you know. One one guy went down, and three of our guys landed on him. So hopefully we'll have a little better luck. Well, if you fall down, you get up and you go. First goal is you don't fall down. But if you fall down, you get up and you go, and you go, and you go, and you go, and go do what you want to do. Earn this. Right. Not Morris. When we talk about visualizing that start, visualize it. Pony everybody out. Put your head down and focus what's in front of you. You know, go out there and want it. Just like you second practice. I told you go out in front of practice. You do it. Seems like whenever I tell you to do something, you do it. So just do it. Go out there. And take all that f***ing anger and unload it. All right, dog. I believe in you. Let's go kick some ass. Anything can happen if you want it bad enough. All right. Now you f***ing go do it. Check out all your smooth shit on the hot lap and get ready for it. Get ready to attack. Go out there like you're in a boxing match. You like contender, right? You can light it up, dog. Hey, I love you. Hey, I, I, I love you too. <laughs> and 14. Good job, boys. Give those kids a pass on the head for me. Skinner 13, Jason 14. Johnson 25. That was better. Him and Jason, both of them, all the way, you know? Two not too good starts outside the top 20, all the way up to 13th and 14th. Good rides. How's it make you feel to see your guys out there racing each other for a position like that? I, think it won't uh, I it. like I like I like it better when they're next to each other because it's easier to keep track of them on the lap times. It was good. It was good. A lot better than the first moto, that's for sure. Well, I know you can never be satisfied in this sport, but are you at least pleased? Uh, pleased, but not satisfied. Yeah. At least we got a good finish at the end. So clean everything up, pack it all in, go to the hotel, crash. That's the first moto, all the way through, no giving up, no matter what, tried your hardest, got a little tired the last, you know, but, but you tried, you didn't give up, that's the start, you know? You didn't give up, which means you thought about it out there. You thought when you were riding and you kept it going and you kept trying and you kept going. You lost one spot that you had gained, you know, and the next spot after that was Mills and Whitcraft and getting in the top 20, that was it. You know, that's close, that's, that's a hell of a lot better than Every other thing's been, and this morning, and everything, so. So a terrible first moto, second moto got better? Yeah, over cap on the weekend, that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you got good first motos, good second motos, two good motos. Today we started off with five guys in the main, so an incredible qualifying weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. And then three guys out in one lap of the first moto, and yeah, just a disaster of a first moto, but uh, they came back, Skinner got his best moto of the year with a 13th, Jason got a 14th, two hard fought positions. Johnson made a breakthrough, even though he got, you know, 22nd, he uh, rode strong the whole way, came from way, way, way back there, about dead last, fell in the first turn, you know. Rode strong, didn't get tired, didn't fade, and uh, Brandon rode good, and that's his first one of the year, you know, solid, two mid-20s. 
and Dougie was hurting from that crash. The first one, he's the only one who kind of got beat up, but at least he's okay, and he'll be back and ready to go next week. So I'd, I'd call it a so-so day. So where do you go from here? Tear down after meeting, off to the restaurant, shower, kind of relax a little bit, sleep for like four hours, catch the earliest flight home, spend a little time with the family on Monday, and uh, that's it, back to work. Next Friday, fly back out to Bud's Creek, Maryland. It's often been stated that you can say what you want about your brother, but God help the stranger who speaks against him. Families don't always get along. They fight, Joel, and tell you the things that you don't want to, but need to hear. And while it's nice to have a friend in your corner, it's a lot better to have an entire family. Stay.